We have an Earth-directed solar storm and the promise of more, with some big flare players rotating through the Earth strike zone. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash SWEN. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week is picking up in activity. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see all of the active regions rotating into Earth view from the east limb, but they're not the only story. We have had some gorgeous prominence eruptions. You can see one right here. Whoosh, that was a beautiful one. We got another one following it. Whoosh, neither of those are Earth-directed. We got a third one up here. Watch this one go in some beautiful eye candy. It'll lift off here in just a second. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it goes. Whoosh. Gorgeous eruptions, but not Earth-directed. However, when we have this many filaments, as you can see, all these little worm-like features on the surface, these regions can launch in a very stealthy manner. In fact, just below region 3926, we actually got a stealthy solar storm launch right there. That actually is a partially Earth-directed solar storm, along with a couple other prominence eruptions you can see here. They're just all over the disk right now because we're still in the solar maximum phase. And when we pull up our coronagraphs, you can see there's a little bit of something right here. You're going to see a lot blasting off on that side of the sun. Boom, right there. But look at all this wispy stuff down here. This is that partially Earth-directed solar storm. It's actually hitting Earth right now, but you might not notice it unless you're at high latitudes because it's really not giving us all that much. But that's only one of several solar storms that are on their way to Earth right now. The second big one We'll talk about here in a second. It comes from these regions right here, region 39, 28, 30, uh, 933, and 3932. Especially region 3932 has been firing off. You can see I caught one right there. These little impulsive flares, but these things are also launching a lot of material as well. So we have we have solar storm launches along with these. Uh, these big uh, uh, solar flares and near R2 to R3 level radio blackouts. In fact, we'll have one right here. It's an M8.9 class flare. Boom, right there. Let me roll this back a bit so you can see it. There we go. That's the M8.9 flare. This also had a little bit of involvement from this region up here because it did launch a solar storm. So as we take a look in coronagraphs, you don't see all that much going on uh, all the way around the disk. You see most of the material going south because that's this jet of material right here. But you do see a little bit of a halo. Let me back this up so you can take a look. Watch and see that little puff up there. So we do have a, a solar storm coming to Earth. Earth, we're not expecting it to be all that big a deal, but it will be bringing us some decent activity, possibly get us to G1 levels here over this, this holiday uh, festivities. Uh, on, on top of that, as we continue watching this set of regions rotate through the Earth strike zone, there is this core filament. Do you see this thing? And it keeps lighting up and looking like it's being activated. If this filament launches, this will be a very dense Earth-directed solar storm because it's rotating through the Earth strike zone right now. So we're keeping our eyes on that very carefully because we're expecting region 3932 and 3933. They keep firing kind of sympathetically. We're getting these R2 to almost R3 level radio blackouts. And if region 3933 lights up in a big way because it's getting more unstable as it continues to grow, these could actually give us very big solar storms over the next couple days. Days. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, expect more noise on the dayside radio bands. Expect those radio blackouts to continue to be a bit intense over this next week and expect to have a chance for bigger and better solar storms.
Now, switching to our M flare and dayside radio blackout threat meter, as we take a look at the X ray flux, we can see it sitting well above the seafloor over this past week. And that means by proxy, the solar flux is also staying pretty high. We've got some decent radio propagation on Earth's dayside. Over the last week, we've only seen a few M class flares. Things have been pretty quiet. But as of about the 23rd, things started rising. You can see that noise floor really beginning to rise. It also had region 3932. That's when it started rotating into Earth view. It fires off that near X class flare. You can see that that's an M 8.9 class flare, but it's really impulsive and short. After that, you can see the other big flares. Those are also from region 3932, but the smaller M class flares, those are actually from region 3933. They're kind of trading volleys back and forth right now. And that's because region 3933 is getting to be, it's growing uh, quite complex. And so it's beginning to fire off more solar flares. And if this trend continues, we will start seeing R3 level radio blackouts. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders and you GPS users understand you're gonna likely continue to have issues on Earth's day side that might worsen as time goes on if region 3933 continues to grow like this. And now switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now, as I set this solar storm model in motion, you'll see that one solar storm that it launched during that M8.9 class flare. This solar storm is a bit on the wispy side. You can see it kind of breaking up a little bit. Noah's expecting it to hit Earth about mid-afternoon on the 25th. So, hey, right in the middle of Christmas dinner, right? So, <laughs> Aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitude, you might get a chance to chase. Uh, we do expect to have a bit of Aurora clear down to mid-latitudes for at least a short while. And this is also because our Earth is pretty well preconditioned right now. We've been having a lot of fast solar wind and a bit of aurora. We've been hovering just below active conditions. So we could get some decent shows from this, especially in the northern uh, parts of the uh, mid-latitudes mid like northern United States and Canada and possibly in the upper UK. So aurora photographers, get ready to chase. And hopefully with that new moon that we've got, that'll make the festivities pretty bright. Switching to our moon, we're moving through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon with the new moon being on the 31st. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora and possibly some meteors, well, now is your perfect chance. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that solar storm that's on its way to Earth. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a severe storm, not expecting it to be all that big a deal or last all that long. So by the 26th, things should be calming back down already. But remember, the rest of the week is kind of off limits when it comes to having a decent forecast because we've got those big flare players moving moving through the Earth strike zone right now and that core filament we're watching. So this forecast could change very quickly and we could easily have some more solar storms on our way to Earth. Now at mid latitudes, the conditions aren't quite as exciting. We're expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a major storm. Uh, it's not that bad of conditions. So we are still expecting some aurora possibilities down at mid-latitudes, but you're going to have to be a bit more discriminating because the aurora might be a bit more fleeting down there. And again, keep your fingers crossed because outside of getting another solar storm at Earth, things are going to just kind of settle back down and go back to being pretty quiet. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting well into the 200s for solar flux. This means that radio propagation on Earth's day side is, should be in the pretty good range. Sadly, however, we do have some moderate noise on the bands right now, and this is because of region 3932, 3928, and 3933. All of those regions are big flare players, and they're giving us R2 to possibly R3 level radio blackouts. In fact, NOAA's giving us about a 65% chance of an M-class flare at R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and about a 10% chance of an R3 level radio blackout. Those are X class flares. And this is easily going to continue throughout this week. That might not get worse, but it probably isn't going to get much better. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're going to have to kind of hunker down and grin and bear it on Earth's day side right now because we do have a lot of noise and we're also going to have issues on the night side from those solar storms. But hopefully next week will look a little bit better. 
Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we are sitting at the D2 minor range right now. This is because we are have elevated uh, storm levels. We're not at the S1 level right now. We are still sitting at the S0 level, so it's not too bad. We're going to drop back down into the D1 normal range here pretty soon. This is all at flight level 360, by the way, for you aviators. NOAA is giving us about a 10% chance of a radiation storm at the S1 to S2 level over the next few days. That risk will likely rise as we move to the end of the week, and that's because we've got those big flare players rotating to the west limb. But we should also have those elevated fluxes die down a bit also by the end of the week. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew and uh, you high-risk passengers, well, keep your eyes on the ICAO advisories right now because this could change pretty rapidly. We have been having lots of radiation storms on the sun's far side, and those regions are rotating into Earth view now, so we could get uh, this forecast changing quite quickly. So the space weather this week is getting a bit more exciting. We have a solar storm that's on its way to Earth, and it should hit just in time for the holidays. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, well, you've already been getting a little bit of a show, and this should bump it up a notch. Now, Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, this might be a little bit underwhelming because the storm is not going to last all that long. But we do have that nearly new moon for you, so that should help quite a bit to make that Aurora pop in the night sky. But if it this ends up being a bit underwhelming, don't worry. We've got those flare players that are rotating through the Earth strike zone now, and the chances of us getting another Earth-directed solar storm before the end of the year is pretty good. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things aren't quite so great for you. We definitely have a bigger chance for uh, R2 to R3 level radio blackouts this week, but it's just this week. If we can just kind of get through this week, those regions will rotate to the sun's far side and things will quiet down again. So just kind of hunker down and deal with the solar storm on Earth's night side and some of this noise on the day side. And now you GPS users, well, kind of the same news for you. We have that solar storm hitting that's going to cause you some issues if you're anywhere near Aurora on Earth's night side. And on the day side, that noise and those radio blackouts can really make dawn and dusk kind of hard to navigate. So just stay vigilant. And outside of that, well, your GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.